As many of you noticed in the final scene of my last video, my mailbox flag holder is pretty terrible. Also, as some of you commented, you'd like to see something done about it. This project is doing something about it. The pieces needed for this project are of course the flag, a small sealed ball bearing, a stainless steel M6 cap screw, two stainless steel M4 cap screws, three 3mm by 6mm ne neodymium magnets, and naturally because this is a lathe project, a piece of inch and a quarter aluminum round stock. I was more or less designing this as I went, and how things ended up weren't quite how I initially intended, but I'll walk through the steps that I took. First, I needed to create a piece to mount the flag to, and wanted to utilize the existing hole in the bottom as a way to secure it, so I machined a shoulder for it to rest on. The next step was to add a hole large enough to fit the head of the M6 cap screw as this is going to be the main screw that holds the entire assembly together. A quick cleanup of the outside diameter makes everything look nice and to be a consistent size. The first piece needs to be thick enough to support the head of the cap screw and the bearing. This piece is going to be fixed to the bearing only and not touch the cap screw. Again, the load display is super useful when parting larger diameters. The next piece needs to have an internal M6 thread to match the cap screw. It also needs to have a small step that is smaller than the larger bearing race and larger than the smaller one. This small step and the head of the cap screw are going to sandwich the smaller race of the bearing and hold it in place, which in turn will also hold the first piece that the flag will be mounted to. For those keeping score, I finally found a way to turn metal blue.
At this point, I decided to change the design a bit. Rather than mounting that chunky piece to the outside of the mailbox and have it held on by a couple of machine screws, I decided to split it and make the part that's on the outside of the mailbox a bit lower profile and utilize the existing hole from the previous flag mount. This will also allow me to utilize the M6 cap screw to both hold the assembly together as well as hold it to the mailbox. The second piece to be parted off will just hold the magnets and the thread will be removed later. A small step was added to the final piece to help center it in the existing mounting hole in the mailbox. This piece will remain threaded and act as a nut for the M6 cap screw. Interestingly, layout fluid turns from blue to yellow with more heat, but steel, in theory, turns from yellow to blue. This is just a quick operation to remove the threads from the second piece. At this point, almost all the lathe work is done on the three pieces and layout fluid is used again to mark the locations of all the holes to be drilled. Two of the holes will be through holes and later threaded with M4 threads, and three of the holes will be blind holes which will be where the magnets will live. Time to drill a bunch of holes. In case you weren't sure, using a center bit to drill a through hole is a good way to break the tip off. Now to do a little tapping. I'm sure you're wondering why I didn't use the great center punch kit I got and always link in the description and to be honest, I'm wondering the same thing. With the hole drilled, I can test what ends up being the set screw to keep the assembly from turning on the mailbox. The last bit of machining that needs to be done is to open up the back side of the first piece to be able to accept the bearing. A little sanding to get all that blue layout fluid off and a couple of final test fits and it's almost time to glue the remaining bits in. To glue the bearing and magnets in, I'm using green Loctite 680, which has been incredible at gluing metal together and is actually intended for mounting slip fit bearings, so this is the perfect use case. As a side note, trying to get the magnets not to fly out and stick to each other or anything else before the Loctite dries was a bit of a challenge, but I eventually got it sorted out.
With all the pieces machined and the magnets and bearing glued in place, it's time for one more final assembly to test and make sure everything is working as it did in my mind when I was trying to think of a cool way to mount this flag. Also, I want to go over the different pieces and how they all fit and work together. The first piece holds the bearing and one magnet mounted at the 12 o'clock position relative to the flag being in the upright position. The middle piece has a small step to prevent the bearing from binding when it is assembled and two magnets mounted at the 12 and 3 o'clock positions as well as a small M4 tapped hole to prevent the entire assembly from spinning on the mailbox. And finally, the last piece has a small step to center it in the original mounting hole in the mailbox as well as a tapped M6 hole in the middle for the main cap screw to thread into and a through hole for the M4 mailbox set screw. There is also a small step on the first piece to mount the flag around using the original mounting hole and a small M4 tapped hole to mount the set screw so the flag doesn't spin on the assembly. To put this together, the flag set screw can be tightened so the flag is mounted. Then, the M6 cap screw goes through the middle piece with the magnet sides facing each other and finally gets tightened into the last piece which acts as a back plate and sandwiches the mailbox in between. Finally, the mailbox set screw can be tightened, which prevents the entire assembly from spinning on the mailbox. Now that it's all assembled, there are two positions in which the magnets will allow the flag to stay in place. The first is in the 12 o'clock position relative to the flag being up, and the second is the 3 o'clock position for when the flag is down. The operation is super smooth from the bearing and really neat because magnets are magic. After letting the Loctite cure overnight, it's time to install it on the mailbox. A new hole needed to be drilled for the new set screw in the back plate. Assembly is just the same as it was on the bench, except for now it's being mounted to the side of the mailbox.
It's also worth noting that the inside pieces are very low profile and not sharp, so there shouldn't be much risk of cuts or scrapes from putting mail in or taking mail out. And that's it, a really nice properly working flag that stays up when you need to mail something, down when you don't, and operates very smoothly. Hopefully this was easy to follow, but let me know if I need to follow up with more details on how this went together. As always, thanks for watching, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and definitely drop a comment to let me know what you think.